Lettering is the cosmic comic frosting of our comic book cake, so let's get to frosting. Hey, Walter here, and we are back with the lettering portion of making a webtoon from start to finish. We've done writing, thumbnailing, pence inkling, colors, and now it's time to tie it off with a pretty little bow, lettering. Now, if you know me at all, you know I have a passion for lettering, and I think that's because it's often overlooked, marginalized, and poorly done. But on the flip side, out of all the disciplines when it comes to making comics, it has some very straightforward rules that are easy to understand, easy to grasp, and will also make your comic look professional right off the bat. Now, that's not to say that lettering is some mindless data entry task. It is an art form and it is a subtle art form. Not only does it have to work in conjunction with the artwork, amplifying the storytelling, but it also has to not impede the storytelling. And you have to deal and think about the people that are reading the comics and which ways they're moving, what direction they're going and how they understand what they should be reading next. It is a lot of work. I've done a few lettering videos, which I highly recommend. They'll get you off to a solid start. And as always, anytime I do a lettering video, I have to give a shout out to Blambot. That's where I get all of my comic fonts. He has a bunch of free fonts and a bunch of reasonably priced fonts. That's dialogue, sound effects, and design fonts on top of that. Now, before we start, I have to mention that I don't usually use Clip Studio for my lettering. I use Photoshop. So I wanted to force myself this time to actually learn Clip Studio since I've done the rest of the comic in Clip Studio. And I'm struggling a little bit, but towards the end of the video, I come to an understanding with Clip Studio about its lettering tools. And I've kind of grown to like the dialogue lettering tools that Clip Studio has. What I do not like is trying to do sound effects. Uh, that was really tough. I had to struggle a lot to figure out ways and, and workarounds for doing things. With that being said, if you have a software that you prefer for lettering and specifically for sound effects, let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for cool new software to use. You'll see me struggle a little bit with the lettering when I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to do. So you can just ignore that or giggle gleefully at my misfortune. But let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here are our five files. Now this is a trick I like to do. I'll create a new layer and fill it in completely with white. Now that is a great way to help me see my lettering over the artwork without having to worry about uh, putting the balloons in right away. So like, see there, I can't see the border, uh, but if I create this new layer with white on top of it and then lower the opacity, now when I create those boxes, I will be able to see how thick that border is. Now, as far as borders are concerned, you're gonna have to kind of just pick what, what you want and what works for you. So here I'm using a seven, which I think looks good to me. Now, this is gonna be for a narration balloon, so I don't want it to just be a plain white box that looks like a dialogue font, so I'm gonna change the color to something a little off yellow, and then change the border color to an orange, and I'm gonna turn off my white layer just to see how that color works with the colors of the comic. I'm gonna lighten up that yellow a little bit so that the words will show up more. If you use too dark of a color and then put black dialogue on top of that, it's gonna be hard to read. And so here I'm just doing a little transformation of the object to give it a little bit more character than just a simple boring box. So once you type in dialogue on top of a dialogue balloon or box in Clip Studio, it merges, it connects the two layers together. So now they are working in conjunction. So if I move this dialogue layer, it's all gonna move together. And you can see here when I'm transforming the box, it moves the dialogue as well because it's keeping the relation that you created in the first place. So I have to move it into the center. Now once I move it into the center, it's going to keep that relationship, that spatial relationship between the two. So when I resize the box now, it's going to try to keep deep in space in the center of whatever box I create which is kind of cool once you get used to it and you understand it. But when I first started working with this, it drove me crazy. 
So you see there, I move it, it's all connected. I just have to move that one layer. That's kind of nice. So now once you've created a certain stylized box, you can reuse that over and over again. I just duplicated the layer. So now I have two and it kept all of my configurations. And so now I just type in the new thing and you can see it's too big, right? So I need to adjust the layer size. So then you just do that and you can see how the dialogue just stayed center for us, which is really nice. So thumbs up for that Clip Studio. Okay, so now we have to make our first dialogue balloon and I'm gonna open up, <laughs> that's the wrong thing. I'm gonna open up our thumbnail file that we did all the thumbnails in because if you remember, we wrote the script, the dialogue in here. We could also open the script up, but I made changes to the dialogue as I was doing the thumbnails. Uh, this would be up to your preference on if you do that or not. Obviously, you could pull up the script if that's easier for you, depending on your workflow. So now it is time to create the uh, dialogue balloon. Now I'm gonna struggle a little bit with this. I'm, I'm trying to come up with a unique shape that isn't just an ellipse or a box. I kind of want it to be specific to my own comic. So I'm using the curve balloon with the spline. So you can see I'm trying out different shapes. Going really slow here at first because I don't really know what I'm doing. Like I said, I don't use Clip Studio a lot. And I'm gonna keep making a bunch of shapes until I finally get to the shape that I want. Scrub through some of these so you can see all the different balloons I tried to make until I finally found one that I liked. And now I'm making the balloon. So I'm trying here to do a hand-drawn balloon with the balloon pen, but I decided eventually that I didn't really like this. So I'm gonna go to the balloon tail tool and have Clip Studio make it for me. And the reason I didn't like it was because it just wasn't clean compared to the actual balloon shape. Like they just look too disconnected. And that's not something that I want the reader to see. You don't really want the readers to notice the lettering. Like you want it to kind of be in the background. So it's almost like watching a movie to them. Like once they get into the comic, they're not gonna realize that they're reading because they're so much into the story. And if you start making your lettering very jarring or very obvious, suddenly they realize that they're reading a comic. So this balloon tail tool is kind of weird. I had to get used to it. Like for me to end the tail, I have to hit enter on my keyboard. I don't know if there's a different way to do that, but if you keep clicking, it basically just keeps curving the tail. So you kind of have to get the curve where you want it and then hit enter on the keyboard without shifting your pen around or your stylus around. Otherwise it's gonna do weird stuff. So I got a tail I like, I adjusted the width. Now here's a note about lettering balloons. The tail width as it touches the dialogue balloon should stay pretty consistent across your entire comic. You don't want wide tails and then skinny tails because that breaks the flow for the reader. They start noticing the differences. So you wanna to try to keep your balloons as consistent as possible. Now that doesn't mean you can't make artistic choices. Just think about what you're doing and have reasons for doing it and don't just do it willy nilly. So now I'm doing the dialogue for his computer. Uh, there's a few different ways you can do this and you can see I'm kind of stumbling around trying to figure out exactly what I want it to look like without having it look like the narration balloons. What I am gonna end up doing is adding some additional control points so I can really, really alter the shape of this box and make it look like its own thing. And that's just by using the control point tool. So I'll add some control points in here so I can make some jagged things. That's kind of popular to use with robots or machinery that's talking um, or television sets or phone. You kind of get this jagged shape which symbolizes the mechanical static nature of those sounds. I'm also changing it to red here just to kind of give it that alarm feeling, that sense of urgency. And I'm picking a different font to kind of show off the computer nature of it. Again, this is a font that I found on Blambot. Okay, so that page is lettered and now we move on to the next page. And like I said, once you create a stylized balloon, you can reuse that. So basically I just copied that balloon from our first file into our second file. And now I can just change the text that goes in there, resize the balloon to get it to work. Now here's a thing I noticed with Clip Studio. 
when I resize the balloon, it also resizes the tail. So if I make the balloon bigger, the, the width of the tail gets wider. If I shrink it, the width of the tail shrinks down. So depending on how much you resize your balloon, that could drastically alter the width of your tail. So you'll have to go in manually and change the width of the tail after you change the balloon. Now in Photoshop, I could isolate the balloon from the tail, but in Clip Studio, I can't do that. I can isolate the tail, but I can't isolate the balloon. So that was a little weird for me. Okay, so now I'm trying to come up with an alarm sound effect. So I'm just trying to pick the right font for it and then I'm gonna go in and size it. And here you're gonna see me messing around, trying to figure out how I can actually make this alarm sound look good. With uh, sound effects like this where it's multiple sounds, I just create the, the layer, the sound effect, get it to look the way I want and then I just duplicate it, rotate it, resize it, just something to make it a look a little bit more interesting and distinct from the other sound effects. So Clip Studio has added a stroke which is putting an outline around the images on a layer. So that's really nice for sound effects. It helps make the sound effect more readable against the artwork since it doesn't have a huge white balloon to make it pop off the artwork. So right here, I'm trying to convert the text layer into a vector shape layer. This is super simple to do in Photoshop, not so simple to do in Clip Studio. You can see I tried to change it to a vector and it turned it into this black blob that I can't select individual elements because what I wanted to do here was I wanted to change the size of each letter individually, like make the D really big, the O really small, and then also shift the alignment so the D would be higher or maybe at an angle, which is really easy to do in Photoshop. And yeah, you could do this in Clip Studio by typing each individual letter on its own layer or changing the size, but then you wouldn't be able to get the rotate. You could rasterize the layer so that it's not a text layer anymore and then just select and move them. Now I don't like to rasterize my text because once you do that, you can't go in and change it. Like if I wanted to change this to three O's, I could just use the text tool and stick it in there and I would be good to go. But if I rasterize it, I won't be able to do that. I would have to copy one of the O's and then paste it, which is fine. But if I wanted to make it better, it's gonna start losing some of that quality. So I do not like to rasterize when I'm doing my sound effects. But that would be a very quick solution. Now here I'm trying to give the text a little bit of a gradient. Again, this is super easy to do in Photoshop. Not so easy to do in Clip Studio, but the workaround I found was to create a layer above that text layer, put some gradients on that, and then clip the layer to the text layer below it, which basically means that that layer is only going to affect the layer directly below it, which is kind of nice for doing this. It's not super intuitive, but it is a workaround to get the effect that I want. It's not quite as poppy as I would like it to be just because of how the layers are working together. It is a little bit more muted than I would like, but maybe with a little bit more practice, I would be able to lock it down. Again, I'm just doing copies and pastes and duplications of those layers to make it a lot faster for myself. Now here you'll see how it's getting cut off on the edge. At first I didn't realize why it was doing that. And then I finally figured out why that is because if you copy a dialog box from another file and you paste it into another file, it creates a mask for some reason. I don't know why it does that. So depending on where that mask lands, it's going to cut off certain pieces of that. So you'll see further on in the video, um, I start deleting those masks once I realize that. And the mask is this little box over here that has like a white part and a black part. So in the art file, you will see everything that's in the white and you won't be seeing anything that's in the black. So just go ahead and delete that when you do a copy and paste of dialog from one file to the next. It's not a huge deal, but it kind of had me scratching my head. So on that balloon right there, I kind of shrunk it down. You can see how thin that tail is compared to the other tail above it. Okay, so here's the first time I'm trying to actually flip the balloon. So basically the way I did that was just to do a transform. And then you, when you're transforming it, you shrink it down all the way until it's nothing and then go past that. And that will flip the image either horizontally or vertically. And you can also just rotate the image 180 degrees to get it to point in another direction. 
And here I'm trying to make a different tail because it's coming out of the TV. I'm not going to change the balloon shape. I'm just gonna change the tail shape. So I'm messing around with different ways to do that. And eventually I'm just going to use a straight line like this to give it that kind of like electronic electricity shape to it. And with that, you still wanna keep the tail width the same as the other tails so that it, even though it's different, it's still similar. And now we're just continuing along, moving along, rinse and repeat. And here I wanted to create two balloons connected together. This is nice when somebody has like two thoughts and they're the only ones talking. And basically the way you do that is you just select that balloon and then paste it. It's gonna paste it into the same layer. Now I had some tricky issues with Clip Studio where sometimes it would work that way and sometimes it wouldn't work that way. But when all of these balloons and tails are in the same layer, it, it intuitively connects them together, which was really nice because doing something like this is a little painful in Photoshop. So this was one of the things that I really liked about Clip Studio, but like I said, I kind of had to mess around with it to get it to work correct. But of course, once you have this, you can just duplicate this layer for any double balloons, or you can even add three or four, whatever you want. Okay, so right here, when I typed these three lines, like I noticed that these lines were really far apart. The spaces between I mean and hey there and you is huge. And this is wasting a lot of space. So you wanna shrink this down. You wanna decrease that line spacing. So the way you do that is go into the properties for that tool and you'll see this setting, line space and alignment. And you just wanna decrease that spacing. This is gonna depend on your font, but basically you want the lines close enough to where there is no space except for what you need for those letters or bold letters, which you might need to change. Of course, this means I have to go back now and update all the other dialogue I did. So this is something that you would have wanted to figure out at the beginning. And then so when you copied and pasted this across files, those settings would have already been there. But now once I've done this for Syndra, I mean, hey there you, I can copy that balloon and those settings will stay with that balloon. So I don't have to worry about it again. It's something I should have thought about uh, when I first started the file. Now there is a trick with Clip Studio. If you do story mode, which you get if you get the more expensive version of Clip Studio, and I think there's a way to change the text settings, the properties across all of the files in that story. That is not something I've messed around with, but I do wanna start looking into the story feature just to see how that works and how it might help me with my Webtoon story since I do do a single episode across multiple files. All right, here's another sound effect. Just a, uh, this is vaporized from Blambot. Now here, I really wanted to change it up because having those letters being all the same size is pretty boring. So I create the layer on top of it. I do my gradient to try to affect, like just having a single color, flat color on a sound effect is boring. Adding a simple gradient on it instantly makes it look more exciting. So I add my stroke on here, give it a dark blue to kind of go along with the lighter blue. Now I could have used more of a green color, like the energy coming off the ship, but then it might blend in too much and you want your sound effects, depending on what you're going for, to really pop off the page. All right, so here I had better luck converting the text file into a vector. So now you can see I can move the letters around independent of each other, sort of. It's kind of weird how it was working, but for this text font, it did work okay, but you're gonna see when I try to do another sound effect that it did not work and I'm not sure why. All right, here we are at the final layer and you can see that clipping mask is screwing with me again, but we're going through, I'm just transforming it, trying to get the balloon to go in the right direction. This is also a pretty cool feature with Clip Studio. With Photoshop, I just have a few balloons that I have pre-made that I copy and paste from a resources file that are in the different directions, or I just do like a rotate, a flip horizontal and a flip vertical, which is basically the same thing, uh, but it's just really intuitive and quick and seamless with Clip Studio. So here's the other sound effect that was messing me up pretty bad. I tried to convert it into a vector just like I did the other sound effect, but when I did that, you can see that the lettering itself became really gross and chunky and sloppy. 
and I don't know why this particular font did that. I messed around for a while trying to get it to look a little bit cleaner and it never did. So in this case, what I did is I just duplicated that layer and then rasterized the duplicated layer so that I could manipulate the text. And I duplicated it just because if I did wanna change the text, I would still have the original layer. I could go in and duplicate it uh, again and then change it again. Uh, but when I did decide to rasterize it, the letters were so close, so I went into the text properties and there's another property in there to make the letters themselves be further apart or closer together. So that's something you can look at for your dialogue font as well. But yeah, in this case, I just made them a little bit farther apart. And you can see here maybe where my, my selections aren't very clean and parts of the letter are getting cut off, but it's not a huge deal because the lettering itself, the sound effect is so jumbled, I don't think people will notice or it would look intentional. All right, so here's another cool thing you can do to add a little bit of more energy to a dialog balloon. I just duplicated this balloon and then put it underneath it and then increased the size of the balloon and filled it with red instead of white. And it kind of gives that yelling sound effect. And here's something I probably should have done during the coloring phase, but when I was looking at it for lettering, I noticed that Syndra just looked like she was in his ship the entire time. So I wanted to do this like teleportation Star Trek effect so that it would be obvious that she teleported in. And this is just a bunch of marquee selections with gradient tools to kind of make it soft on top of the character art. And that's the nice thing about doing all of the steps yourself. You can jump back and forth between different things. Like if you wanted to letter the comic before you did anything else, you could do that. And here I'm going back through, I'm looking at all of the files, just seeing if anything pops out, like is there too much space between the letters and the edges of the balloon, not enough space? Is some of the lettering not centered inside of the balloon? Um, are there things that don't quite look right? Is there a better place for it to point? Uh, another thing to note is that the tail of the balloon should be pointing at the character's mouth or whatever is talking, like a speaker, or wherever the sound is coming from, you want the tail of the balloon to point to that. Like, I wouldn't want the tail to be pointing to the top of his head, or to his finger, or to his chest. That doesn't make sense. That makes the reader think that the sound is coming out of that person's finger, which is just silly. And this is a thing I like to do. I like to create a resource file that goes along with a specific comic, and I'll just copy and paste the dialogue, the alarm sounds, the computer sounds, the narration, the sound effects, and I'll paste that into a single file, like a small file. It doesn't even have to be big because the text layers and vector layers are kind of symbolic. They're not rasterized, so it doesn't matter how big it is. It doesn't even matter if it's showing within that file, which you'll see I copy and paste things in, and they're down there at the bottom of the screen. And it doesn't matter that you can't see them. And this is when I figured out that the clipping mask was kind of hiding things from me. Um, but besides the point, I copy everything into this file so that when I do the next episode, I can just open up this one resource file and copy and paste from this file into the episodes that I do after this. And it's just a quick way um, to have a one spot to go to to get everything I need. And if you're not sure what size to make your font, there's a really quick, easy way to do this, which is by opening up another comic that you like, copying that comic and pasting that into your comic, increasing the size of that comic, and then getting your dialogue to match the size of the comic you like. I've shown this off in another lettering video, so if you wanna know how to do that, check those out. And there you have it, our comic is lettered. Now we just have two more steps, layouts and uploading. Really quick, really easy, but I do have a few extra pointers, so make sure you sub to catch those videos. And I do have a couple other lettering videos that I will pop up on these clever little end cards so you can check that out. And if you wanna support these videos, consider checking out my store or my Patreon or just share this video with your mama and tell her to like, link, love, hug, and sub for more sweet, sweet goodness. Peace.